Chapter 18 Folk of a Feather Flock Together Neath Rules for Changeling When I woke up, I was so warm and comfortable. I thought at first I was back in my room, own room, in Beverly Castle. Then I realized it was much too quiet and the air smelled stuffy and kind of flowery. I opened my eyes. Reflected candlelight danced in the shiny side of the big black box about an inch from my nose. I wallowed upright in a huge pile of velvet-covered crush cushions and stretched. Honey peered down at me over the edge of the box. You slept like the dead, she said. The maid's been trying to get in and from it for hours. Her voice brought in all back. Sammy the sculptor, the chorus line, the producer and his cabinet of tech heads, and the lights of Broadway going out, Changeling turning them back on again. Where's Changeling? I asked. Changeling's taking a bath, darling. Your satchel is on the breakfast table. Hobnobbling, hobnobbing with my magic coffee grinder. The Bram Stoker doesn't be do solid food, I'm afraid. Honey, honey room, Honey's room was decorated entirely in red, black, and pale yellow. So was Honey. She lost the Shirley temple look for black tights and loose red silk shirt and scraped her blonde ridgets back into a curly ponytail a door opened and changely walked into the room i wasn't sure this morning exactly how i felt about changeling on the other hand she was totally she was so totally not from around here she didn't know folklore. She didn't know the rules. I wasn't even sure she believed in fairy ta- fairies yet. If she looked just like me, she should be just like me, you know? Like Nixies are like other Nixies, but she wasn't. And on the other hand, she could see things I couldn't and knew things I didn't. Without Changeling's tech magic, I'd be netrograding with Sammy the sculptor over which body part to trade for a ticket to Peter Pan or decorate the producer's cabinet of heads. I owed her big time and I didn't feel good about that either. Changeling marched over to me. She still wore her embroidered jacket with flowers and little faded from their bath in New York's harbor but she traded her ragged shirt and t-shirt for black jeans and crisp white shirt. Honey told me that my old clothing was not appreciated for Wall Street, she she told me. I did not allow her to replace my jacket. However, she exclaimed me with a slight frown, do you think the dress is appropriate for Wall Street? Probably not. I bit my lip. You look very nice, Changeling. Thank you. All at once, I realized just how grubby and itchy I felt. I scrambled out of my nest and told Honey I wanted a bath. Honey's bathroom was mostly occupied by a black marble bathtub the size of a small pond. Honey showed me how to turn the, on the water and where she kept the bath oil and left me alone. I stripped off the spider silk dress, washed my hair, and skinned the rose scented water, and then floated. What should I have been doing was planning how to find the dragon of the Wall Street and how I was going to get his scal- scales from him once I found him. But every time I tried to focus on the subject of dragons, my mind skated off to the honey had told me about changelings. It made a folkish kind of sense. 
Living with folk, I was growing folky. Living with mortals, changeling was growing mortal. But what did that mean exactly? Would I grow magic as I grew folklore? folklore? Would changeling eventually lose hers? Was her skills with computers mortal knowledge or fairy magic? What kind of supernatural had she been origin originally? How had she been chosen to lead the life I would have had if the folk hadn't switched us? Honey tapped on the door. Do you, I do hope you haven't drowned, she called out. Management would absolutely hate that. One in out of out in a minute, I shouted. What about Honey? She used to be mortal like me. Now she was a supernatural with her own set of unbreakable rules to live by. How did she deal with that? Why wasn't why wasn't talking to her like talking to a moss woman or a nixie or even Astris or the puka? Astris liked me, but she didn't understand me. Honey understood me, but Honey drank mortal blood. It was all very confusing, but I was totally waterlogged. I got out and put on the black jeans and white shirt Honey had left for me. Not the sneakers, though. I would. I never wear shoes in summer. The spider dress I rolled into a ball and stuffed into my pocket. Back in the bedroom, Honey was curled up in a red leather chair with a white porcelain mug. Changeling sat at the black liqueur table eating scrambled eggs and drinking hot chocolate. I sat down to help her. Honey wiped a trace of crimson, crimson from her upper lip and I noticed her fingers were bandaged in white gauze. Does it hurt? I asked around a mouthful of eggs. It itches, she said. My fault entirely. I couldn't resist touching your dress. I've never seen a real spider silk one before. She put the mug on the floor and unfolded her legs. This is all very cozy, darlings, but we really need to discuss this Wall Street expectation of yours. What, what are your plans? I took another bite of eggs and chewed, thinking fast. The financial maze belonged to the folk who lived for gold, giants, cobbolds, worms, and dwarves. No big European dragons. The dragon of Wall Street had long ago eaten all serious competition. Not for the one not for the first time. I wish that I knew more than the basic facts about the non park neighborhoods of New York. I swallowed. Well, I thought I'd get as close as I could and trust to luck. Honey's fangs showed at the corners of her smile. Wall Street isn't like New York's harbor, darling, she said. It's not even like Broadway. You can't count on running into a friendly investor or a helpful broker who will show you the ropes. There's no such creature. Then I'll have to do without help. If you can tell us how to get to the treasury, maybe I can ask for a job, you know, like the debutant who's got, whose date got stolen by Ogre's daughter. She pretended to be a housekeeper until she figured out how to break the spell the Ogre had laid on him. Honey laughed. The only job you're likely to get the treasury in the afternoon snack. I was about I was getting annoyed. Then what am I supposed to do? Because I don't get the dragon scales. I'll never get home. Changelings either. Calm down, darling. I'm about to introduce I'm just introducing a note to of reality into your charming fantasy. Not to be around the bush. What you need is native naive guide native guide does that mean you're coming with us honey shook her head daylight you know ruins of my for my complexion no i'm going to send you to my friend fleet 
She lived in the maze all her life. Another strange supernatural. Another new adventure. It was hard to remember I'd even wanted one. I poured some more hot chocolate. What kind of supernatural is, is Fleet? I asked, resignfully. Does she like a... Does she like to be asked for things? What will I give her in return? Oh, Fleet's not a supernatural, Honey said. She's a mortal changeling like you. I stared at Honey, who gave a Shirley Temple giggle. I surprised you, didn't I? It's true, though. There's a whole street of changelings in the maze. Maiden Lane, a whole... Wait, Maiden Lane. But first you... But, but first you have to get there. She turned to Changeling. You're good at remembering things, right? Aren't you? While Honey and I talked, Changeling had a pile the dirt, dirty plates on the one corner of the table with the folks laid neatly across them and arranging some little enable boxes she found like in a flower-like pattern. I have an idiot edict memory she said without looking up from her work what do you want to remember a series what do you want me to remember a series of directions honey said street names left turns right turns things like that you need to get it exactly right a mistake could be fatal i will not make a mistake changeling said I tried to pay attention while Honey taught Changeling the way to Maiden Lane. I really did, but there aren't any streets in the park. Names and turns slid in one ear and out of, out the other like water through a pipe. Instead, I watched Changeling arrange boxes. Her hair had dried into creak, creakly halo. I touched my own curls and wondered how alike we exactly are. I thought my eyes might be a little greener and my face a little rounder, but I wasn't sure. I wish that Honey's room was had a mirror. Changeling glanced up and caught me staring at her. I laughed nervously and Changeling turned back to her boxes. What comes after Worth Street? She asked Honey. And then it was all turn left here and take the third right. There until Honey was satisfied that Changeling had the direction memorized. Then it was a long time ago. I, p I picked up Satchel and slung it across my chest. I hope management won't charge you too much for all those camp contaminated cushions, I said, looking at the black and red nest beside the coffin. Honey smiled a rather nasty smile. Management can go file its fangs, she said. Come on, darling. You don't want to be caught in the financial maze after dark. The hall seemed to be empty of sensitive vampires. We followed Honey through a maze of long corners, lined with shiny wooden doors with brass plagues on them. Little, little long tree. Lane for front any George M. Conhan. Finally, we came to the hall, so encrusted with paint, painted red dragons and gold curl cues and Chinese characters for luck and joy, that at first I didn't even see that there was a door at the end. This opens on Cannell, at the heart of Chinatown. Honey said. The financial maze in the next district south. Do you watch where you're going, darlings? Kennel is delightful, but financial maze is something for, of the forest perlius. She signed. I wish I could come out with you. I so want to know how it all comes out. I wanted to tell Honey how much I liked her and how grateful I was for the cushions and the bathroom and the clothes. But I wasn't sure that vampires like to be thanked, so I said, Would you like me to come back and tell you about it? Yeah, you, darling? She threw her arms around my waist in a big hug. 
Even though my clothes, I could feel how cold she was. Break a leg and don't worry about a thing, darling. You and Changeling are a great double act. The dragon won't know that what hit him. The dragon door led to a room about a size of the producer's elevator with a second door in the facing wall. When Honey closed the door on her side, we were in a total darkness. Then I heard a click, and Changeling sw swung the second door open onto the bright sunlight and the chatter of many voices.